This is part six in our series of lectures on section 1.6 of the text. And in this video, we're going to do a few exercises involving the triangle inequality and the reverse triangle inequality. So uh, let's recall the formulas for the triangle and the reverse triangle inequalities. The triangle inequality says for any pair of real numbers x and y, the absolute value of x plus or minus y is less than or equal to the absolute value of x plus the absolute value of y. And the absolute value of x plus or minus y is bigger than or equal to the absolute value of x minus the absolute value of y. Okay, so here's your first exercise. I want you to make use of the triangle inequality in order to get uh, an upper bound on the quantity absolute x squared minus 3x plus 4 making use of the fact that, or the assumption, that the absolute value of x minus 5 is smaller than 1. I want you to do it using the triangle inequality, even if you know another way of doing it. And I just want a rough upper bound, which is to say, I don't need the best possible upper bound. I don't need to know, in other words, what the maximum of this is. I, I don't, the point is, I don't want you to work too hard. I just want some kind of an upper bound that you can deduce fairly easily from the triangle inequality. Now the idea of the calculation is um, to, well let's begin by applying the ordinary triangle inequality to this. So absolute x squared minus 3x plus 4. If you just did triangle inequality on that, you don't worry about any of the minus signs. You just take absolute value of everything. That's what the triangle inequality tells you. And that's the same as absolute x squared plus 3 times absolute x plus 4. 3 times absolute x plus 4. And now, if I could get an upper bound on absolute x, then I could substitute that in here, and then that would be, this would be less than what I would get by replacing x by that value. So, we're, in order to get that up, absolute uh, upper bound on x, we're going to use this. Okay, so we start with, we want to make a statement about x, and what we do is, we know something about x minus 5, so we use this old trick of adding and subtracting 5. If we now apply the triangle inequality to that, we get this. Now we know that absolute x minus 5 is smaller than 1, and 1 and 5 is 6. Okay, so there you see we've got that upper bound of 6 on absolute x, and so if we now go back here, we can replace all these absolute x's by 6, and that will give us an upper bound. So therefore we're able to conclude that the absolute value of x squared minus 3x plus 4 is less than, so I'm looking here, each of these is less than if I replace x by 6. So that's 36, 3 times 6 is 18, plus 4. 36 and 4 is 40, 40 plus 18 is um, 58. So that's my answer. That's my the upper bound that I'm looking for. So now if I'm actually trying to write up a proof of this, what order should I do things in? Well, I think I should begin by doing this calculation here. Then I should go straight to this. And once I got this written down, I can use this fact here to then write this. Okay, so give it a try. Put your video on pause and see if you can write up a formal proof of this. And when you c come back, you can compare your answer to mine. Okay, here's my formal proof. I say, from the triangle inequality, we deduce that absolute x is equal to... So here you see I've done that trick of adding and subtracting 5. I apply triangle inequality to that. Then I use the fact that this is smaller than 1. I, I could have put strictly less than if I wanted to. 1 plus 5 is 6, 
And then I go straight to, <coughs> so I say, so again, from the triangle inequality, then I go to the thing that I'm interested in estimating. I've just applied triangle inequality to that, and now I'm using the fact that x, absolute x is smaller than 6 to get this, which is 58. And so I conclude that the rough upper bound that I'm looking for is 58. Okay, that's a fairly typical use of the triangle inequality. Now in this one, we're going to try to make use of the reverse triangle inequality to get a positive lower bound on this quantity, absolute 2x minus 3, if we know that absolute x minus 5 is smaller than 1. Now you may see perhaps what you think of as a simpler way of doing it. You know, if absolute x minus 5 is smaller than 1, then if you think about it, that tells you that, you know, x is within one unit of 5, so x must be somewhere between 4 and 6. And if x is between 4 and 6, you can easily figure out the 2x minus 3 is between, you know, two values that you can calculate. Um, so you, you really can do it in, an, in another way. But I want you to do it using reverse triangle inequality just to get practice using it. Because um, this technique has rather far-reaching implications. One can do it in more general circumstances than um, real-valued functions on the real line. Okay, so let's do some calculations to see what's involved. So if we're trying to get a lower bound on 2x minus 3, let's start with 2x minus 3. And we know something about this x minus 5. So where I see this x minus 5, um, I'd sort of like to get that in the picture. So let's rewrite this. Wherever I see an x, I'm going to put x minus 5 plus 5. Now how much is that? That's 2 times, keep the x minus 5, but now we have plus 10 minus 3, so that's plus 7. So now I want to apply reverse triangle inequality to this. Now which way should I look at it? Which is bigger, this one or this one? Since x minus 5 is smaller than 1, this is sort of around 2, and therefore this term is going to be smaller than this term. So when I apply reverse triangle, I'm going to view this as the bigger one. And so that's bigger than or equal to absolute 7 minus absolute 2 times x minus 5. Now be very careful when you use this fact here. If this is smaller than 1, then minus it is bigger than minus 1. So this is bigger than 7 minus, if I replace the x minus 5, by a 1. And 7 minus 2 is equal to 5. And so that is my lower bound. That's, that's the proof. Okay? So see if you can make use of those ideas to build a correct proof of this fact. Put your video on pause, and when you come, come back, I'll show you my proof. Okay, so here's my proof. It's pretty much what I wrote down there uh, earlier, but of course you have to put in all of the connecting words and make sentences. So we have that the absolute value of 2x minus 3 is equal to this, which is equal to this. And so applying the reverse triangle inequality, we get absolute 2x minus 3 bigger than or equal to, so I'm looking here, absolute 7 minus absolute 2 times x minus 5. Of course, the 2 can always factor out of the absolute value sign. And that's bigger than or equal to 7 minus 2 times absolute x minus 5 with a minus in front is bigger than minus 1. And that's 5. And so 5 is a positive lower bound on this. So it's very important when you're working with inequalities that if you have a string of them, they're all going the same way. If this was bigger than and this was smaller than, then what you 
wind up deducing is of no use at all. Your inequalities in any string have to all go this, the same way. And the hard part of working with inequalities is making sure you don't make any mistakes. So, the fact that x minus 5 is smaller than 1 was exactly what I needed um, to get my inequality going this way. So be extremely careful when you're working with these inequalities um, <clears throat> that the, you know, when you're assuming something like this to be true, that you use it correctly when you're writing down uh, the inequality that you're going to deduce from it. Uh, really one of the hardest things in dealing with this subject of advanced calculus is how one manipulates inequalities to get them work f to, to get them to work for you correctly. So now in the next few videos we're going to actually prove some results about limits and I'll show you how we make use of these ideas uh, from the triangle inequality and the reverse triangle inequality to work with those limits.